Hello, hello, Robert here. Hello. Hello, Robert. Hi, it's John. Uh, John Lambert. You spoke to me earlier today. Hello, hello, John. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah. Um, my pleasure. Right, I'll just get my um, book out. I've got Enjoy Life Forever. Yeah. Um, it's chapter. There's there's a couple of things I haven't read it all the way through. I've been skim reading bits and pieces that interest me. Yeah. Um, I must say I was very interested in chapter 7 on the Holy Spirit. My background is in the evangelical church, so they would have had a different perception as to who the Holy Spirit is. Yes, yeah, okay. Um, I don't go to any church now, but when I did, it was evangelical. Um, And chapter 33, which is what what I mentioned to you earlier today, um lesson 33 section 3 what will god's kingdom accomplish after the wicked are destroyed it says this the first three lines after the wicked are destroyed jesus will rule as king for a thousand years during that time he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless now i have problems with that it i've read in your literature that the 144,000 anointed or co-rulers um they are recreated from Jehovah's memory as spirit creatures. They're not human. Well, no, they are. Yes, that's quite right. Yeah, they're, they're like angels in heaven, yes. But they're not human? Um, well, they're, no, they're not. Well, they were human. Yeah. Like she's, with, she's uh, not a very good example. She was a human and raised the spirit. So when they're, when they're resurrected, I mean, some if they die now, will be read as a twinkling of an eye, Paul mentioned. Yeah. But they are spirit, they're angels, if you like, yeah. So how will they, so there's a question, how will they rule over on the earth? Help so, humans. Sorry, question, yes? sorry, could you say that again, sorry. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> uh, Robert, thank you for asking questions, I appreciate that. It yeah. makes me think, which is always a good thing to do. Yes, um, yes. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sorry. You totally sorry. lost me. Uh, uh, I, I uh, can only uh, focus on one single thing at a time, and I'll concentrate no on problems. that. But if we okay, go from sorry. point to point to point, then I just switch off. Um, yeah. my, my question was, you said that the 144,000 co-rulers, the anointed, yeah. or the little flock, as they're called, yeah. are yeah. non-human spirit creatures. Now, that is they new were, to me, yeah, and but... I, I'm rather shocked at that. No, no, they, they were people who've gone to heaven. The first resurrection in Revelation, oh, dear me, um, <clears throat> is saying that they are the ones, not as kings and priests yet. They are people, they were people. They're not angels converted to rulers. Are, are so, they, uh, I'm not only interested in one thing, I'm not interested in anything yes. else. Are they resurrected as humans or as non-humans they're resurrected as angels as spirit creatures yes right so they're non-human non-human yes yeah right C- could you uh, show me that where does the bible say that that's quite a you know it's a bit of a shocking statement what, why is that they can't live in heaven as humans can they I don't believe, I I mean, you're saying that people like Judge Rutherford and Fred Franz and dead governing body members who come back to life, come back to life as non-human spirit creatures. That's 
not the traditional view that Christianity has had of the resurrection. Could you no. prove that from the Bible, please? I can, Bill. We'll need to have a discussion on that. Um, what I'm saying is that... Yeah. Um, Robert, can I do a favour for me? Yes, sure. Can I come back to you on this? I need to go and um, look at that the yes. resurrection in more detail. Yeah, I'm, OK. I don't have to give a jump for it. So... Where do you get the, the, the litter of a book from, by the way? Have you, have you talked to brothers before? Um, I've spoken to them at the cart. This was given to me by somebody uh, in Southampton. They they posted it to me oh, very kindly. Yeah, very uh, good, yeah. Um, there is a follow-up question, and that is, uh, I'll read the little section again. After the wicked are destroyed, Jesus will rule as king for a thousand years. During that time, he and his 144,000 co-rulers will help humans on earth to become perfect and sinless. Now, yeah. I find this a little difficult because it seems to be saying that during the millennium, the 144,000 anointed are going to help Jesus to make those humans resurrected to the earth sinless, perfect and sinless. In other words, they're going to have a priestly role of yes. mediating Christ's sacrifice. Yes. Um, the description revelation, and you caught me on the... <laughs> yeah. uh, well done. Well, well done, sir. Um, yes. And you think about it. Yeah, there is one. Resurrected kings and priests. Um, well, first, I, first, I first, first, first Peter two nine talks about um, Christians being kings and priests, but their priestly yes. office is to administer, to give praise. No Christian well, has a priestly. Oh, can I just finish? No Christian yeah. has a priestly office of forgiving another human being of their sins. And no, and, and no Bible I, verse talks about Christians being made into spirit creatures, and then as spirit creatures, they're going to work mediating Christ's sacrifice and um, work in a priestly function of administering the benefits of Christ's ransom sacrifice to mankind. Um, right. There, there is a watchtower I found. I was on JW.org the other day, and I found the watchtower for the 15th of March, 2012, page 23, and paragraph 12 says this, What relief will come to human creation during the thousand-year reign of Christ? At that time, the glorified sons of God, that's the 144,000 anointed, okay, will be further revealed when they act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. Yeah. What scripture does he quote with it? It doesn't. It doesn't give any scripture. But it, it says that the glorified sons of God will yeah. be further revealed when they act as priests with Christ, administering the benefits of Jesus' ransom sacrifice to mankind. That is more or less what the Mormons and the, Cath and the Roman Catholics claim for their priests. Um, the only main difference is Catholics and Mormons claim that their priests forgive your sins on earth today, whereas this is um, uh, projected for the millennial reign of Christ, not today. So there's the one difference. And the second difference is Mormon and Catholic priests are human beings who falsely claim they can help Jesus to forgive you of your sins. But you're claiming that men will be made into non-human spirit creatures and then during the millennial reign, they're going to work with Jesus to help forgive the sins of those resurrected to the earth. It's, mm -hmm. you know, rather hard for me to accept. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's quite right. shocking. <laughs> Revelation. Um, hold on. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And, and, and you, I've not discussed it for a while, needless to say. Um, let me just think about it. Um, five verse. Yeah, Revelation chapter homework for you, all right? Yep. Revelation chapter five. Yep. You're not going to go to verse uh, ten, are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to pick a verse out, but you have to look at everything in the yes, context. Revelation, so Revelation, yeah. Revelation five ten simply says that um, Christians uh, in all eternity after Christ's return, they'll come back with Christ to this earth, and then having been reunited with their physical bodies, glorified human bodies, they're going to reign upon the earth forever. So it says, and has made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Revelation 5.10, New King James Version. Yeah. But so, why do you think that they, that 
they're going to materialize as, as physics as, as humans. Sorry? Okay, so you're saying they're going to come back as humans. I don't know. Okay, let me think about that, okay? Okay, right. all right. All right, well, um, you've got my number. Could I ask, I can never speak on a Monday, and could I ask that you give me notice as to when you want to speak to me? <laughs> I, I can, I can, I, I can, I'm busy during the day, and I'm busy sometimes yeah. at night. It doesn't matter as long as you give me a day's notice at least, or two days' notice. No, and you can no problem. Just post, just post me a time when you're going to phone me. And of course, yeah. if it's not convenient, I can always post. I can always let you know. Yeah. But yeah. It, that, that would be easier than going back and forth and trying to negotiate. Oh, yeah, a time. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. yeah. So okay. whereabouts, whereabouts do you live? Um, I, I'm way to the south of you. I'm, I'm on the south south coast. Oh, in, in right. Very, very yes. south. Very good. Not to, with, yes. with, funnily enough, of course, with Zoom and stuff, it doesn't matter where you live, do it? No. <laughs> you can well, send any meeting. No. I do have yeah. Zoom, so I can speak to you on Zoom. I do, yep. Um, right. Um, I've got a personal Zoom account. Um, wait a minute, can I? Oh, John. Oh, creep, 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 John. Um, right, 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 right. Let me get myself going. Um, but if I speak... I, we would have to agree to just discuss one topic. I find it, you know, I, I can't yeah. concentrate on more than one thing. I'm no, afraid. no, I, I would agree on that. Oh, okay, yeah. what's your what's your name, please? I forgot your name. Mine's uh, Robert. John, John, John Lambert. John, John. Okay, John. Lambert. Well, look, I'll wait for you to. Yeah. I'll wait for you to contact me, John. No, no, I will. Um, and I've got your number, and I'll give you a group. Thing. By the way, I live near the. If you have any girls in your life, I live near the Traffic Centre in Manchester. I'm, I'm don't sorry, I don't know what you're saying. What are you saying? I'm just saying, I live personally, I live in, in Eccles in Manchester, near the traffic centre. I'm center. hundreds of miles away from you. I've never no never been to Manchester. So, honestly, <laughs> I do have a friend who lives in Manchester. He, yeah, yeah. He, um, But um, I, I've never been to Manchester myself. I'll wait for you to call no me then, John. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.